Hello, hello. If you're new here, hi, I'm Gazi. And if you're a returning customer, very happy to see you again. This vlog is kind of like a reset. It's a mix of productivity snippets and how I keep my internal systems from crashing. Also, I've been in New York for about six plus months now, so it's time for an update. If you ask me right now if everything was worth it, probably say no, but only if we consider one metric, which is money. A studio in Manhattan right now costs $5,000 per month, but I also think the city rewards you in ways that are not easily quantifiable. I feel like I've grown more in the last several months than I have in the three years living in Toronto and I've learned the intricacies of mundane and self-preserving life that I did not recognize before. So yeah, it's hard, but also strangely enticing. Oh my God, there's a divine intervention going on. Anyway, enough of that, let's do some human stuff. This looks so sad. <laughs> I'm not beating the allegations with this one. Look at this guy. He looks like he can uh, do the Gundam style pretty well. I think I have to close the curtains because this is like too much. I think I'm literally going to photo age into a nine year old in two seconds. Ha, I'm back. So for my master's, I'm working on a project that involves studying how bias shows up in AI. Basically, I look at how small word changes like gentle artists or intellectual artists can affect the way that the model outputs stuff. Like there are changes in gender, age, race. So on the coding side, I've been running prompts through different models, collecting outputs and analyzing patterns in Python, mostly with libraries like Pandas, NumPy, and other basic computer vision tools to detect demographic trends. Basically, this project is meant to see how bias hides in places where most people never notice. In a bit, I'm also gonna go to the Pilates class I booked earlier. Listen guys, I'm not your gym bro. I'm not that, I'm not that type at all. Like I understand protein and that's about it. The reason I'm starting to work out is because I realized it's actually conducive to happiness. As I'm like going to work and coming back and doing my studies, a lot of my old spark just disappeared completely. And little by little, I'm trying to get myself to do that regularly so that I can get my old spark back. Like, do you ever notice after a workout, you just feel clearer? That's not in your head. That's literally your brain getting a chemical reset. Because I know that version of me that used to feel so alive, it still exists, but it's literally just buried under fatigue and too much screen time. Okay, I'll stop talking. Let's get dressed. after our workout. <laughs> I think this is gonna undo everything. This is uh, pork xiaolong bao. What, sorry? This is pork xiaolong bao. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, I'm not trying to say it. Aren't you? Okay. <laughs> what do you mean, aren't you? <laughs> it's not hot, so you can put the whole thing right now. It's so good. I'm enjoying life again. Like, is it... All right, let's go. Get the coffee Danish. Yes, ma'am. Oh my god, this is this like a piece of shit. Is it like a plate? <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying my shit looks like that, but this looks like <laughs> your, like your shit definitely looks like that. Not, I guess this one's more like yours. Oh, oh yo, relax. I 
I just came back and I thought it would be the perfect time to give a little setup tour. One thing about me, I'm very particular about my setup. I spend 90% of my time here, so I really make sure that the setup is up to the standard. Literally the rest of my place, like I don't really care. Like I could sleep on a twin air mattress from an 80s forever, but my setup needs to have a 49 inch monitor. <laughs> I think I developed that as I grew. I realized that once I have things that I love around me, it kind of subconsciously lets me want to work more. So without further ado, let's give you a nice setup tour. Also guys, I got the new iPhone. Did I need it? Let's not talk about that. The first time you walk in, the first thing you see instantly is the desk. The desk is from Desky and it's around 72 inches. The chair is from Top Chop, and I really think this is a great chair if you don't like feeling like you have a spinal injury after two seconds of sitting down. It also has this footrest extension at the bottom so you can take it out and put your legs on it like a little kawaii girl. Moving on to the desk contents, the first thing I can talk about is the speaker. I don't use the speaker much, but I think it's a great Bluetooth speaker with so much bass you can feel it in all your orifices. It's from Gravistar and I really vibe with this kind of aesthetic. Also ignore the stains on my mouse pad. At this point I need a new mouse pad and a new coaster and potentially a new way of living too. Okay this I keep for sentimental value. It's like a lamp but with charging capabilities but I barely use it too. This is also for sentimental value. It's a mini pixel computer from Devoon. They were both my first ever free things I got for starting content back in 2020. So yeah they've been here since the OG internship days. Same goes for this keyboard and mouse. They've been the same for years. The keyboard is the Gamake K66 on Amazon and the mouse is Logitech. Although I might swap it for a wireless one because the wire low-key overstimulates me sometimes. Okay, the main show of the event is definitely the monitor. It's the Samsung G9 OLED 49 inch. I personally would first go with the LG Ultra Gear 34 inch. If you're only starting to dabble into the world of ultra wides and if you can handle that, then you should probably get this one. No complaints so far. I've had it for years and the immersion on it when you play story games is next level. I I also like the clean look of a single monitor, none of that dual setup abomination in my territory. This part of the setup is a bit messy, but they're essentially the organs. I have three primary computers and I really think you don't need that, but that's just how it's always been for me. The first one is the PC I custom built a few years ago. It runs on a 4070 Ti at the moment and I have the full specs linked below. I use it mainly for gaming at the moment. For everything else, out of convenience and also out of familiarity with the Mac OS, I use my Apple M4 Pro. I'm sorry this is a bit dirty, but this is my primary device for all coding. If anyone tells you you can't use a Mac for coding, either they're above 40 years old or only touched assembly their whole life. And this one is my work computer. This was also given to me by Google. It's a MacBook Air. I don't need much compute on this one as all the coding I do is on the cloud. I low-key keep this robot arm. <laughs> it has a built-in Raspberry Pi which you can engineer to make it do all sorts of things. Um, wink wink. I wanted to try to make it how to draw but during one of my projects it stopped working so now it's a highly treasured robo corpse that I'm kind of emotionally attached to. Okay, the back side is a bit messy. This is the part that no one sees. But one thing to mention is this light. It's just a sunset lamp I kind of use here to accentuate the ambiance. You can find it on Amazon. Other than that, the rest are wires. I only have one cable for each of my MacBooks and that's connected to a Thunderbolt hub to power them. Then that Thunderbolt hub is connected to a Ugreen USB switch along with my PC, which minimizes a lot of port shifting and enables me to switch between the three modes pretty easily. Last thing to note is I genuinely believe in minimizing clutter and keeping the setup as simple and functional as possible. Something that's easy to use, easy to change, and doesn't create extra overhead. That's the beauty of a good setup. It's about how it's set up, not how it looks. Okay, I also want to take this time to talk about today's sponsor, Warp. I was genuinely so happy when they reached out because I really think they have a really cool product. It's this whole environment built into one app so you can use it for literally anything. It has the ability to go into your computer and make the changes for you, of course with your permission. So it allows me to do mundane tasks so much easier. Okay, this is like a use case I've actually used Warp in. When I interview for companies, obviously I code a lot and I want to save my coding problems from lead code. It's also very common to go to the website, copy paste everything, and also write your notes with everything you've learned. With Warp and the AI tools that they provide, you can literally do it with one command. It's also very aesthetic and it tickles that weird part of your brain. I use it mainly to multitask and get a lot of things done very efficiently and quickly so that I can focus on the important part about coding, which is actually designing the technical aspect, brainstorming, and architecting.
It's now eight and that means more coding. A lot of people were asking me if I'm still doing my master's, like what's going on in that front? Yes, I'm still doing it. One of the things that I suffered with undergrad is I took six courses at once and it literally killed me to the point where I didn't even enjoy what I was studying. I was literally regurgitating over and over again just to get the highest grades possible and get out of there. And I don't want to do the same mistake with masters. And I'm fortunate enough to have a job that I like doing. That's why I'm not required to finish it very quickly for jobs that require its qualification. It's purely just for knowledge. Hope that helps. insane from this angle but i wanted the books in the background while i talk about my favorite book uh, these days i've been reading this book called alchemize it's basically a dark fantasy um about this girl called helena she essentially lost her memories so she's in this war-torn country and she is taken prisoner by this high reef character who's supposed to be you know He's basically tasked with unraveling her memories. All in all, it's like a 1000 page book, so it's a lot more than what I just said, but I've been loving it. I literally ordered the book today because I wanted a physical copy, but I usually read all my books on my phone. The, the reason why I like my phone is I can just whip it out whenever and I can also highlight so I can see all my favorite parts at the same time. And I'm curious to know if anyone else is reading this book. It literally came out like two weeks ago, like September 23rd, I think. So there is no discussion post. There is no edit. There's no TikTok edits. There is literally nothing on this except for a few Reddit threads. It's so nice reading a book where you're exposed to it for the first time without anyone's interpretation of it is available. It's literally up to you to build a world in your mind.